Okay, it's time for an update because the fun part of the ride to recovery is now here. I no longer have something attached to my head and I also don't need this anymore. Actually, the only thing that shows off that something bad happened to me is this hole in my head. But I have these super cool bangs to help cover it up so nobody sees it. And to make my hairstyle even better, the part where they shaved my head so that they could screw the bolts into my skull is finally starting to grow back. So pretty soon I'm going to be able to do my hair all nice again. It has now been almost five months since the accident, so if you don't know what happened or you want to hear the details, you can watch my previous video when I describe what happens when a 110 pound girl tries to take on a Chevy Tahoe with nothing but a bicycle and luckily a helmet. First of all, let me just say how hard it was when I first started wearing a halo. I couldn't just ask Google how to eat, sleep, or even just live life with a halo on. So I basically had to figure it all out by myself. So I figured I'd give a quick rundown just in case any of you were going through something similar and have the same questions as I did in the beginning, or maybe you're just curious on what it's like to live with one of those things attached to you. I had to figure things out really quickly. For instance, sleeping was really hard. In the beginning, I would roll up a little blanket to put under my neck and sleep on my back. And then I would have my husband help me get up by lifting up on the pillow I was sleeping on because I couldn't get up by myself. Eventually, I was able to roll over to the side and use my hand to push my head up but over time the pain just went away and I was able to just hop up out of bed like it was no big deal. Eating was also super complicated because I didn't want to drop anything down my front so I always had to lean super forward to eat so basically eating anything that was easily stabbed with a fork was a huge bonus. A recliner and HBO Max will be your best friends. I couldn't do anything other than sit around for a few months, so it was a great time to binge watch Game of Thrones again. And a recliner with a button was a lifesaver because it was the one thing that made this part of my life somewhat comfortable. And showering was quite the task that was only worth doing once a week in my opinion. <laughs> Luckily I had a shower head that was detachable so I would use that to do the bottom half of me and I would shave my legs. And then I would get out and my husband would scrub my body with a washcloth inside the halo vest. After that we had a fancy setup for washing my hair. He would help me lay back with my head over the bed because it was suspended in air. And then he would put a bucket underneath my hair and a bib on me so that none of the water would go on to the actual bed. So then he would just give me the best three minutes of every week. It just felt so good to have my hair washed. Once I was done with all that, then I would get up and put on the new tank top that I was gonna wear for the week. I thought I looked like a total slob wearing a big baggy t-shirt, so I was willing to put in the extra effort to put on a tank top so I could look somewhat decent for my condition. The actual recovery work is what made this process mind-bogglingly fast for everybody. Even my surgeon was completely blown away by how quickly I healed up. Don't get me wrong, I'm not totally done with the recovery process. It's definitely gonna be a long journey. It's really weird having a portion of your life just completely skipped over and not a single memory of it. But to get back to what I did for recovery, I got an OMI PEMF for Christmas last year. I can't really say if it actually works or not because you lay on it and you don't feel anything. But apparently the pulse electromagnetic frequency heals you at the cellular level. And I laid on it for two hours every night. I did heal up in record time, so maybe it does help. It could have also been a mix about how nutty I am about nutrition. Most people give me a hard time for being plant-based, but I have anecdotally been proving the benefits of a plant-based diet right for almost six years now. Nutrition is a staple in my life, and during that time it was even more so. On top of eating super nutritious food all the time, my son also made me a smoothie every day with all of the goodies in it. Anyway, I always say that unless I get a run over by a bus, or in my case another Chevy Tahoe, I will probably live to be 120 years, so there's never going to be any changing my mind that I'm doing anything wrong, except maybe riding my bike outdoors in Las Vegas. Which brings me to my next topic. Everyone is always asking if I'm going to go back out on the road and ride my bike again. Well, the good news is before this accident, I was doing the majority of my riding indoors on the app Ruby anyway. I would just go outside once in a while to be social. Well, I learned my lesson. I can still have coffee with friends after rides without having to ride my bike with actual cars on the road. Maybe if I lived anywhere but Las Vegas, but enforcing good driving habits isn't on anyone's agenda yet. 
I was one of, if not the safest rider I knew. It basically just made me realize that every time I rode my bike and came home, I was just super lucky. I swore to my husband and son that I will never make them worry about going through this again. If I ever ride my bike outside again, it will be somewhere where I have 0% chance of getting hit by a car. I fixed my road bike enough to ride it on the indoor trainer and that's where it will stay. There is no need for me to buy a new one. I have a gravel bike, so if I ever feel the need to get outside and ride, I can just go out on that thing. I finally have permission from the doc to do normal things. So this is the first week in five months that I am doing stuff. And I want to invite you all to participate and make this a banger of a comeback. I'm doing the turkey track this Thursday at Lifetime in Green Valley. I do have a 50% off code for anyone who's in the area and wants to come out and join that morning. And then Sunday will be my first group ride back since the accident. Ruby has been super supportive of me during this entire journey. And of course, I wouldn't ride any other app anyway. And I have a 30-day all-access free trial code that is available for anyone. So you should definitely come and join me for my first group ride back. It will mean the world to me if you can join me. I will also be live streaming. So if you don't have an indoor trainer and you do have a stationary bike, you can pretend to join the ride too. And we can just ride together no matter where you are. So what happened to me? It is what it is. But now the fun part of the journey is beginning. So if you wanna join me for any of it or just follow along, it would mean the world to me. Thank you so much.